hello there, friends, and welcome to another edition of A Daily Walk. So glad to be here with you on this Monday morning. You know, these Mondays, they just keep coming, don't they? Just one after another. You think you, it's Monday, and then, you know, some people get really bummed out on Mondays. I, you know, people are just, you know, there's, there's certain things that get you going on Monday. There's Monday motivation. It's all about perspective. How are you going to embrace it? How are you going to enter into it? Well, we're going to enter into it with the Word of God. I think that's the best way to start any day. And for those of you who have been traveling with us through this journey, you know we are in this second epistle, the Apostle Paul written to his good friend and colleague, son in the faith, Timothy. And we're at this point in the letter in chapter 4 where Paul's really just wrapping it up. You know, when you get to the end of the letter, you're going to say the, the last few things that you want to say before you close it out and sign your name and hit send. Well, that's where Paul is right here. And and at this moment, as he's writing this letter, he's talking about those who are still with him and actually those that have departed from him. And and this is a real difficult time for Paul. You have to remember, he's, he's just about to be martyred for his faith. And although he feels strong and victorious, he's fought the good fight, he's kept the faith, he's finished his race, it still wasn't an easy time uh, for him as a believer and a servant of the Lord. And so here, as we pick up today, in verse 11, he says, Only Luke is with me, and get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Now, of course, we've talked about this before, but just to kind of bring you back up to speed in the context, Luke was a doctor. And for Paul, who had uh, oftentimes became sick on the mission field, there's some frequent infirmities that Paul had. He talks about this uh, problem he had with his eyes. Another time, um, you know, he had these various maladies that he would encounter. And so I'm sure having Dr. Luke along for the ride was a blessing. And everybody else had left for the most part, but Luke was still there. Luke was the one who wrote the Gospel of Luke. He also wrote the Book of Acts, and he chronicles Paul's missionary journeys um, as you go through the book of Acts and tells you what Paul endured. So he's still with Paul until the end. And he also says to get Mark and bring him with you. Now, this Mark was the one who at one time assisted Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. He was a relative of Barnabas, but while they were on the journey, things got tough. Mark bailed out and he left them. He went back to Jerusalem. When Paul and Barnabas eventually made their way back, They were getting ready to set out again on a second missionary journey, and Barnabas wanted to bring Mark, and Paul said, we can't take him. Uh, He bailed out the first time. Of course, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, we can't can't count on him. And so there was this division between Paul and Barnabas, and Barnabas and Mark went one way, and Paul and Silas went a completely different direction. But now, so many years later, Paul apparently had this relationship with Mark restored, and he said, hey, send Mark, and notice what he said, bring him with you, he's useful. To me in the ministry. You know, there are some people that uh, they don't start out useful and maybe they bail out quickly, but then God does a work in their life. Maybe they have to be out on their own to discover um, what a blessing that it was. And, and so you know, there's lessons that, that God's doing in us that we always can't. Sometimes God will take us out of our normal environment to teach us things that we couldn't learn if we just stayed there. And so that was the case for Mark. So now he's useful. Paul Paul doesn't have any grudge against this guy. It's been years gone by. He just says, hey, bring him back. This guy has become useful. It's been a process. And then he adds in verse 12. And this is interesting. He says, Antichicus, I have sent to Ephesus. Now, if anybody needed somebody to, to stay with him, to be alongside of him in this these moments before his departure from the earth, it was Paul. I mean, to have somebody, I mean, yeah, Luke was there, but man, to have somebody else there also. But Paul loved the believers in Ephesus so much and was concerned for their growth and their faith being strengthened that he was willing to send one of his own helpers and co-laborers to go and minister to them, even though it would have been inconvenient for Paul. It didn't matter. And what we find here, just that, that little phrase, Tychicus, I've sent to Ephesus, says something about Paul. I'm willing to sacrifice my own well-being, my own comfort by having somebody here with me so that the people in Ephesus could be ministered to. That says a lot about Paul's heart for ministry, putting others 
before yourself. And that really is something that Paul wrote about. In fact, when he wrote to the Philippians, remember, he said to not have any selfish ambition, but rather to prefer others, put others before you, sacrifice for others. And it wasn't something that he just wrote in a letter, but it's actually something that he lived in his life. And so he sent Tychicus to Ephesus, no doubt to minister to that church that Paul had planted so many years ago. In addition to that, Paul writes, and this is very practical, Paul said, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus, my jacket. I need the cloak, man, I'm freezing here. And, and then he says, I left, uh, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come, and also the books, especially the parchments. Man, I, want, I need some reading material in here. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna be reading the word. I wanna be reading God's word, meditating upon it. You know, when you're going through something difficult, and even when you're not going through something difficult, one thing that provides us with tremendous comfort and encouragement is the word of God. The parchments, if you would. Man, I need God's word. I've learned in walking with the Lord that there's a lot of things in this world that I can live without. But one of those things is that I can't live without is God's word. I, it's more necessary than food. It's, it's more important to me than, than water. I mean, this is, spiritually speaking, we can't live without the word of God. So bring the parchments. Very practical. And then Paul writes in verse 14 about one of his adversaries whose name was Alexander. He said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. And you need to be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. Here Paul, at the end of his life, is warning Timothy, hey, there's this one guy. How would you like to be named in the Bible in this context? His name's Alexander. Oh, and old Alex, I'll tell you what, he, he caused me a lot of pain. This guy made my life miserable. And he warns Timothy, be aware of this person. You, you need to um, be aware of him. You need to be mindful. This guy has resisted our words. And sometimes um, the Lord allows even uh, difficulties to come in the form of adversaries. And this man, Alexander, Paul's very practical. He warns about him. And sometimes there are people that make their way into the church that have an ulterior motive. They have a hidden agenda. And it's not to glorify God. Perhaps it's to glorify themselves or... They end up hindering somebody else's walk. And when Paul recognized that he himself was on the receiving end of Alexander's activity, he says, Timothy, watch out for this guy. Set a boundary for this guy. You, you need to be aware of it. He's resisted our words. And sometimes there are people that come into our lives that we realize um, we, we have to keep at arm's distance. We have to set boundaries because of the fact that they're resisting the Lord or they're hindering the work of the ministry. And Paul calls it out here. Even at the end of his life, he provides a warning. Well, folks, as you go into this new week, may the Lord strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. Uh, may you continue to grow in the grace, in the knowledge of the Lord as you follow after him. In Jesus' name, see you on Wednesday. God bless.